All right, so welcome to Pico Patches number two. Today's episode is about this patch. Classic subtractive. So it's basically just turning the Pico system into your classic kind of East Coast subtractive monophonic synthesizer, like a Mini Moog, an Odyssey, or an MS-20 kind of a thing. The Pico system is not actually designed for that. It's definitely more West Coast oriented. It's got low pass gates instead of traditional East Coast VCAs or filters. The envelope generators are very simple. They're attack sustain release types, but that doesn't mean that you can't use it as a traditional subtractive synth, especially since the oscillators tune very well over many octaves when fed one volt per octave signals right here and all you need is help from a few little passive extras like multiples a couple of passive attenuators and i will link to my pocket passive patch pal video where i show you how to make these little things and these are very useful for any system any patch this is just a passive attenuator this is a gate to trigger converter and these are multiples. I have other little things that I've made too, like this is another multiple. This is a passive mixer. This is an AB switch. And here we have my favorite, the IMO, which is a sort of JFET based amplitude modulation little doodad. Okay, so let's get to making this patch. First, I will remove everything so we can start from scratch. So we have tabula rasa here. Let's get my little cable stand right there. And right here, I've prepared a patch note page. And basically, if you don't know, the classic subtractive patch that you will find on most monophonic subtractive type synths basically comprises of a keyboard that sends a gate signal to two envelope generators, one of which will control a filter, the other of which will control a VCA. The keyboard also sends a pitch CV, which will control the oscillators. And in this case, the key step, which is a perfect pairing for the Pico system, if you ask me, also has a modulation output, which could be velocity, but I have it set for the modulation strip over here that you can also take out of the analog outputs over here. So there's no MIDI involved. This keyboard actually puts out the CV signals we need. And this patch actually includes a few nifty extras that I've included to make the patch a little bit more flexible and more interesting. First, let's plug the keyboard in. From the gate output on the key step, this little red star splitter here, we'll split that to both our envelope generators, right? And let's use shorter cables for that. Now here's one thing, for the filter envelope, we want the response to be attack release, not attack sustain release. That way we can hear the filter go up and then down while we have a note held. We want the VCA to stay open as long as we're holding a note but we do want the filter to sweep up and down. So since these envelope generators are attack sustain release response, I have devised a little gate to trigger converter and I will share with you how this is made. It's just a capacitor from the input to the output and a diode from the output to ground. And I'll show you a little schematics of how I made this. This is going to make sure that our filter envelope generator will go up and then down and not stay in the sustain stage when you hold the note. So we'll plug this one into our first envelope generator trigger input right here. And then the other one into our second directly because we do want this one to be attack sustain release. Make sure you have both envelope generators on free, not loop. You want to control them with the keyboard gate. Okay, now, I will connect the keyboard's pitch output to both oscillators one volt per octave inputs, right? Here and here. Now I'm going to connect the keyboard's modulation output, right? Which is our modulation strip. And I want that to control the filter cutoff as well. I noticed that the range of voltages that you get from this modulation strip output is a little wide. So I will use one of my passive patch pal attenuators to control the range. And that's going to go into CV input number one of the first low pass gate. 
Now set the first low pass gate to VCF response and the second one to VCA. That's how we're going to use them. The first one will be the filter, the second one will be the VCA. So now that we've made all of our keyboard connections, we can start connecting things internally. So first things first, let's send our oscillators to a mixer. So I'm going to take the pulse output of one oscillator, send it to mix three here, and the shape output of the second oscillator into the second input of mix three. And now these mixed oscillators are going to go into our filter, which is low pass gate one. So we'll Plug that mixer, mixer three's output into low pass gate one over here. And the filter will go into the VCA. So we take the output from low pass gate one into the input of low pass gate two. Now, I want to have the bucket brigade delay in parallel. So for that reason, we're gonna use another splitter and we can use the one that comes with the Erica Pico system, which is a Hosa hopscotch cable. And we'll take the output of low pass gate two We'll plug it into our mix two here, which is gonna be our output mixer. And we also plug it in to the bucket brigade delay input over here. And the bucket brigade output goes into second channel of mix two, which is gonna be our output mixer. Okay, this is getting hairy over here. Now we want to plug in some modulation sources into our modulation mixer. So mix one is gonna be our modulation mixer. And we're also going to split that. So we're going to use yet another splitter here. So definitely get some splitters if you get the Pico system. In order to do more complex patching, you definitely need to be able to split things until you get to making the patch card because you can actually split things on the patch preset card without needing these guys. You can just send any output to as many inputs as you want by just connecting wires. But what we want here is we want to send our modulation sources to both the pulse width CV input of VCO1 and the shape CV input of oscillator 2. Now another cool thing that we can do to add some spice to this patch is connect the triangle wave of oscillator 1 into the linear FM input here of the VCO control module and the triangle of VCO2 into the exponential input of the VCO control. Exponential FM affects VCO1 and linear affects VCO2. So that's a way you can modulate one with the other or even cross modulate them together. For now though, keep both knobs all the way down, both exponential and linear FM down, because we want to start by just doing very straightforward subtractive kind of things and the VCA offset all the way high because we're not going to be using any CV for this. We're going to do it manually. Now let's send modulation sources to our modulation mixer here. Number one is the sine wave, LFO. So now we can, by turning up level one here on mix one, we can send an LFO to those two parameters on those two VCOs. The other one will be the sample and hold, which will be on input two of our modulation mixer, mix one. The other one will be the white noise. Why not? Why not modulate parameters with white noise? That'll make things weird and noisy and strange, unusual. Now, another thing that could be useful is to send our gate output from the keyboard to the clock in on the modulation module. That way, if you use a sequence, the sample and hold will be synchronized with your sequence. Our envelope generators, their outputs need to be connected to their destinations. So VCEG1 is going into CV2 of low pass gate one. So this is our filter envelope controlling our filter low pass gate. And VCEG number two output going into CV2 of low pass gate two. So there it is. There's our hairy spaghetti monster. And now it should make sound. Here's the strip control. Now there's one thing I forgot. I want to have control over the amount of envelope that I'm sending to the filter because it's opening too much and it's, it's nice to be able to control how much of that envelope you want going into the filter. So let's take that VCEG1 We'll plug another patch pal attenuator in its path. 
So now with this little knob right here, I can control how much. Let's make it shorter. So now thanks to the gate to trigger converter, the filter is closing while I'm still holding the gate, still holding a key. And I can have from no envelope influence at all. Let's turn that filter a little bit down. I can have from no influence at all from the envelope to to a little to a lot and that's just super nice to have so now you have two things controlling the filter the envelope with this attenuator and the strip with this attenuator right if i leave it all the way up then you only get a tiny little bit of useful area on the modulation strip. So turning that down. The way I set it, I just go all the way up on the modulation strip and then turn down the attenuator until where I want it to be maximum. And now here's the modulation. I turn up that LFO, you hear that pulse width and shape parameters modulating. If I turn down the LFO on my modulation mixer and turn up the sample and hold, now we hear the sample and hold affecting it. Very cool. And if I turn up linear FM on the VCO controller here, get further tempo variations. And that this will get really weird and strange when you start detuning the oscillators. And now I can send exponential FM to the other one. And why not send some noise from the modulation mixer here. So now we went from something very basic, very bassy, very mogi, to something kind of extreme. And it's very easy to dial it back down. Just turn off those linear and exponential FMs, turn down the noise here. And it's getting kind of difficult to stick my finger through the spaghetti here. Turn off the uh, sample and hold here too. Maybe a little bit of. LFO again, and let's retune the oscillators. You can have a min octaves like that. Or you can have them in unison. And you can detune them slightly. Which is cool. Or even have an, an interval. Right, and here's a sequence. Now, the icing on the cake, turn up that bucket brigade delay. As you can hear, that brings in a little noise, which is why I like to have it in parallel and be able to just cut it off completely. So that's the patch. 
These are my patch notes over here. On the back of the page, I wrote all of the connections that will not be included in the patch card because these are external connections. These are connections that are from the keyboard to the patch there. And there's one more, which is the output of mix three into low pass gate one because on the patch card you don't get the outputs of these two mixes so that's something you have to patch externally so there's a couple of things that need to be patched even when you use the card so let's go on to making the card we're going to turn this into this and i even put a nifty attenuator right on the card there this is our filter envelope depth I use some hot glue with a wet finger to protect all of the cables from accidentally disconnecting or breaking and it also makes the pot sit there much more sturdily. So cool. Let's go back in time and make this preset card. So let's get started making this preset card for the Pico System 3. This is going to be Classic subtractive Sounds kind of like plastic fantastic or something like that and I found there's a few things I want to mention before I go into the time-lapse the card goes like this, right? So if you actually solder the cables on this side They can get kind of bulky and they can get in the way of tweaking the sequencer knobs right here. So what I do is I actually solder from behind, right? I see what connection needs to be made and I make it from behind and solder it in front. So the card will actually look much like it does right now until you turn it around and then you see the connections. Now, thin wire works well. I have a little bit of uh, ribbon cable here which is what's used for Eurorack power and I'm gonna strip out one of these for a nice long bunch of this cable and this is what I'm going to use to make all of the connections all right and what's cool about this cable too is that the plastic is very soft on it so you're going to be doing a lot of wire stripping and that can be tedious if you use a lighter and just heat it up and pull with your fingernails like that you expose the, the wire enough without having to use pliers. Pliers are actually risky because you can actually cut a few of the strands in there and end up having a weaker connection. So this is actually even better using the lighter. Okay, just be careful you don't burn your finger. Wait a minute after you've burnt it before you pull out the plastic on this, right? So we're gonna, again, go from left to right and just make every connection and triple check, make sure everything is correct. So here I've soldered the output from mix one and I've plugged it into shape here but I'm not going to solder shape yet because I'm going to jump from the shape pad to the pulse width CV pad right here and then I only have to solder once both wires. And uh, yeah, don't breathe these plastic fumes. They're even worse than flux. Definitely use a ventilator or something. Actually, I made a mistake here. The shape is output. I should have sent it to shape CV right here. So I'm gonna have to pull that out. And they're supposed to go into this top hole right here. You gotta concentrate and pay attention with this stuff. to put the attenuator from the EG1 output to CV2 input of low pass gate one. Let's figure this out. So I'm, I'm gonna break off everything that's not an actual terminal. And let's see how we can mount this in a way that's not too cumbersome or structurally unsound. So this is ground right here. So it's actually quite conveniently placed, the ground almost solder it right on luckily because 
just happens to be the right position to where I wouldn't need to do a lot of extensions. Let's unplug this cable right here. Let's use the, uh, the desoldering braid to remove the solder from this output right here. Free the hole again and to this input right here. So yeah, it's so easy to make mistakes. This is actually quite challenging and fun if you're into fun, challenging things. From this output to the ground right there, to that right there, like that. I'll have to use a resistor leg or something to extend it. I'll start by soldering the ground right here. I'm gonna do this from the top so it doesn't fall off. Good thing these are nice chunky pads. I can use a good amount of solder to make it structural. And I'll probably use some hot glue afterwards just to make sure it stays. I've just found the right angle middle header here. That'll help make it structurally solid too. If I use just wire, I don't risk of it breaking. That actually feels pretty solid. Make sure not touching any pads you shouldn't with any metal parts from the pot. But yeah, it feels pretty solid, but I still would probably want to use a little hot glue afterwards just to keep it there. So this is gonna go like this on the patch. I'm gonna have this control right here, which is the envelope amount for the filter. I'm almost done. So here it is, I think I got everything. This is gonna be called the classic subtractive. And we're done. Wasn't that easy? Huh? Do you know an easier way to make a subtractive patch with a synthesizer these days? <laughs> Not me. 